All right, so maybe you've seen Zack Snyder's Justice League by now. We're gonna get a little spoilery, but before we do, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take those next steps into their creative journey. Whether you're exploring new skills or taking a deeper dive into an already existing passion, all creative endeavors like illustration, graphic design, photography, animation, creative writing, music, and so much more. And for my fellow cinephiles out there, yes, they do have classes on film and video. Interesting deep dives from creating a modern cinematic documentary to indie filmmaking getting the blockbuster look on a DIY budget. Very interesting, very helpful. And as always, Skillshare is curated for the passion of learning so you're not bogged down with ads. Just the creative world of passion and possibilities. An annual subscription to Skillshare is less than $10 a month and the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link below will get a free premium Skillshare trial membership. You gotta love free, you gotta love premium. So click the link below to journey the endless path of passion and possibility. And thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I do appreciate it. All right, now, since I've already done my review of Zack Snyder's Justice League, we're going even deeper with the spoiler talk of Zack Snyder's Justice League. That's a spoiler warning for this video. Now's your time to bounce if you don't want spoilers. Now's your time to stay if you don't care. But as is the case with every spoiler talk, this isn't gonna be a play-by-play -play of the movie, just some things that stood out to me in the spoiler territory. Also, as is the case with every video, I'm gonna upload this video going, oh, should have talked about that but I forgot. Such is life. First of all, I love how the Snyder Cut starts out, how it's not with some cell phone footage with a kid and Superman talking, cause you know, it has to be kid friendly. It's a comic book movie, right? No, it starts out with Superman dying. I like how Zack Snyder's Justice League starts out with the end of Batman versus Superman and the beginning of Batman vs. Superman starts out with the end of Man of Steel. Each one feeds into the other. It makes it feel like one odyssey. All right, so a couple things to address here that I didn't address in my spoiler-free review. So these aren't actually spoilers. First of all, the movie being four hours, I do hit that point. I'm like, hey, it's four hours long. Is it long? Yes, but is it worth it? Yes. But one thing I didn't talk about is how quickly the four hours does fly by. Also, Cyborg. Yeah, <laughs> Cyborg is the heart and soul of this movie. In a movie like this, you're gonna have that one character that's like, all right, I'm the heart and soul. I'm kind of the audience. I'm new to this whole situation. So the audience is seeing the situation through my eyes, or at the very least, they're more emotionally attached to me. That's Cyborg. And I like how they illustrate like, how broken he is in this digital day and age. Again, he's a digital guy. It's like, oh, Superman's so powerful. Absolutely, not gonna argue that. But can Superman shift the balance of power in terms of financial structure and launch a nuclear holocaust with a thought. No, he can't. And when the movie was illustrating this, I was like, oh, I'd love to see a cyborg movie. You can show how he, you know, allocates funds to this person's bank account. He wants to help people out. And he immediately did that in the movie. And I was like, yeah, like that. But it's cyborg's conflict between himself, him and his father. <laughs> it's the heart and soul of this whole movie and cutting it is a crime which prompted me to do one thing Revisit the Justice League before making this video and holy shit. That is wild It's just crazy to see the differences in scenes like that scene where Batman like ties that guy up guys like what do you want? He's like fear they can smell it. And it brings the parademons who apparently when the parademons die, their blast damage on the wall makes three mother box designs. And Batman's like, good information to have. You know CSI blood spatter experts out there are like, if only it was that easy. If only blood spatter on the wall would just print the name of the killer. Between that action sequences and scenes in general, just being trimmed down to a point where it's like, dude, could you have just left one extra minute in there. In the theatrical cut, like Wonder Woman stops that robbery from happening. And the things that were shaved off were just, it was Wonder Woman being a badass. It was a much better character introduction in Zack Snyder's Justice League for Wonder Woman. I mean, that just goes without saying. And I don't know why it was cut short. You could have just kept an extra 30 seconds, 10, 15 seconds in there where she's just wrecking these dudes. I don't know why it was cut short. Maybe it's cause it's like, well, Strictly speaking, they probably didn't live through that. But we can't have people die in a superhero movie or something. Maybe it's because it's like, no, it's to Zack Snyder, the way she was moving like the Kryptonians and Man of Steel move. Point is that action sequence being shaved down. It's like what you saved one extra minute. It's like, I feel like the theatrical cut of Justice League, there was a hard timestamp given. It's like, you cannot have this movie go over two hours, not by one minute. It's like things were shaved. Like, but can I just spend an extra 30 seconds? No! All right, and that's just how it had to go down. Even when Flash is gearing up like, okay, I can run and make a charge and hit the mother box and I can create the charge to bring Superman back to life. It's so much more intense than the Snyder cut. Victor Stone gets this 
image of doom and gloom in this horrid future that Bruce Wayne's having visions of. Justice League buildings crumbled, Superman's hardcore is clutching what looks like singed bones of who is probably Lois Lane. Darkseid giving him a pat on the shoulder like, it's okay, I care. I don't. So he says no and Flash is like, go, boom! And he runs and he even says like things, weird things happen with time when he goes that fast. And so that's why in the theatrical cut, that picture of Jonathan Kent hits the liquid and sinks. It's like, why was that picture there? In the Snyder cut, the picture's there so you can see the picture go backwards when time starts going backwards. Granted, the mother box goes backwards too, but it's a piece of alien tech. There would be that question like, did time go backwards? Or is that just kind of how the mother box happens? It, did it only happen with the mother box? So the audience kind of needs an inanimate object that we know how it reacts to, you know, space time. We know how a photo reacts to gravity in space time. So when we see it going backwards, we know some weird fuckery is happening. So the picture dropping into the liquid is actually a relevant thing. I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. I apologize for that. Just kind of how my brain works, which is probably why I always forget to talk about something in these videos. But talking about Steppenwolf, yeah, I already said he was much more badass, but I mean, <laughs> after, after revisiting the Justice League, it's just kind of, I forgot how much of an Oedipus complex this guy had for those mother boxes in the Joss Whedon cut. I mean, Zack Snyder's Justice League, he flexes and breaks the arrows in his armor and his muscles just flips horses. Psh, I'm a badass. In the Justice League, he's all like, Mother, I love you so much, Mother. We will do it, Mother. I do it for you. Please, Mother. Kiss it. Just the tip. Please, mother. I was like, oh my God, that guy really wants to fuck his mother's box. I'd forgotten. Like, it, that's one of the reasons, like, he feels so much more badass in the Snyder Cut than the Justice League. Because he doesn't want to have a 4G with him in three boxes. That and his dialogue's better. His look is more badass. And you feel for the guy. It's like, oh, Darkseid thinks you're a fuck up. I just, you want to go back home. I appreciate a villain like that. And I appreciate a movie that illustrates that that is a villain like that. But even some of the jokes, like some of the jokes that weren't in the Snyder Cut, I thought were in the trailers when Zack Snyder was still at the helm of Justice League. Like I thought when Gordon says, he tells Batman, it's good to see you playing with others again. I thought that was in a trailer when Zack Snyder was still at the helm. And Aquaman's like, just like a bat, I can dig it. And he's like, might be temporary. But that joke isn't in the Snyder Cut as well as when Bruce Wayne's face to face with Arthur Curry. And he's like, Arthur Curry, I heard you could talk to fish. I thought that was under Zack Snyder, but those jokes aren't in it. It might've been a case where Zack Snyder was like, I had those jokes, but now people associate cheesy jokes <laughs> with Joss Whedon's Justice League cut. So I'm just gonna pull them out. I don't know, that or Joss Whedon, what had people come back and f just for the sake of filming a joke? Like when Arthur Curry tells Bruce Wayne, have you heard a man stronger alone? He's like, no, I haven't. That's the opposite of what the saying is. Same with the flash and his brunch joke when he was like, I don't have friends. Like, I don't understand people. Like, like brunch, what is brunch? You're in line for an hour. So you're essentially just having lunch. In which I have to humor that Joss Whedon was like, all right, come back Ezra Miller. Brunch, go make jokes. Cut, perfect, all right. We really needed that. Even the pickups of Bruce Wayne starting his car when Barry Allen gets in the car with him when he's like, I'm rich. And you see him start the car and his hands are on the wheel. Like even those shots are different. Like did Joss Whedon have to make them different? It's like, nah, I just want to see him hit the pedal for the gear shift. Or is it now it's like 2021, you need to have the interior of the car look modern. I don't know. So those were pickups that Zack Snyder did recently. Who knows? Volko's in it. I like that too. I like Willem Dafoe being in it because it was like, hey, we're we're setting up a universe here. This is the setup. Amber Heard, is she British? Apparently. British Amber Heard, British Mara's in this movie. Freaked me out again, watching the Justice League. I, I flipped through, I was like, it feels like an accent comes and goes, but her R's are definitely like American R's. Zack Snyder's Justice League, she's like, they're villains of sorts, put the kettle on. It's wild, even at the end of this movie, she's, I'm like, she's still British. It's not like the accent went away. I did like how Mara used her power, how I've wanted to see Mara use her power, which is she can control water. So technically speaking, she could leach the liquids and the blood out of your body. And what does she do to Steppenwolf? Exactly that. Was that in the Joss Whedon cut? No. Steppenwolf just has her against the wall and he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw you to the ground. Cuz. No, he throws her to the ground because she starts sapping the blood and liquid out of his face. He's like, nah, nope. <coughs> that hurt. I always wonder why she doesn't do that. I'm glad she did that. 
Thank you, Zack Snyder. Thank you for having Mara use her powers in a way that anyone who has a superpowered being attacking them would use that power. I will say this too, when Wonder Woman's giving the backstory to Bruce Wayne, when she's like, okay, back in the day, there were mother boxes and Bruce Wayne's like, mother boxes? I don't know what that is because I haven't seen any parademons explode on the wall and imprint three mother boxes. There wasn't a convenient painting where Arthur Curry was with mother boxes. Cause that would just kind of be ridiculous. But I like when she's giving that story, this was the moment it really hit me as to what the Justice League was. It actually enhanced my perception of them, or at least took my perception back to what my perception of the Justice League was when I was younger. She's given the story about how Darkseid came to Earth and everyone got together, the Atlanteans, uh, the world of men, the old gods, the lanterns, the Amazons, everybody, they all got together to fight off Darkseid and Earth is the world that he did not get. He lost his world. It shows why he's like, but just from ego, he's like, I want that world. And shows why Steppenwolf's like, if I'm gonna get back into his good graces, I'll get him the world that he lost. But what I liked about it was you get the feeling like, oh, these gods came together and fought off an evil god. And now the Justice League getting together, they're literally the new gods. That's what they are, that's what the Justice League is. So that backstory that Wonder Woman gives and that connection that I made between the gods of old fighting Darkseid and these new gods, the Justice League, who will have to fight Darkseid, it's the rite of passage into being the new gods. Again, like I said in my spoiler-free review of Zack Snyder's Justice League, things were implied in the Justice League, but the landing wasn't stuck. The connection wasn't made because it was just kind of exposition word vomit, not carrying you through a story. It wasn't storytelling. I was glad that this movie took me back mentally to a time when I saw the Justice League as the new gods. I was like, oh, we're here again. I don't know, there's like this youthful excitement. So when Superman comes back, I was actually glad that the scene when Flash is running around Superman, Superman looks at him. I'm glad that that was in the Snyder Cut because I love that scene. But it's the same kind of gist. He comes back and he's like, oh, I'm kind of freaking out. I don't remember who I am. And so they fight. Although that scene when Batman gets smacked up against the car and he's like, oh, uh, something's definitely bleeding. I'm like, that, that was Joss Whedon. No way anyone's gonna tell me it wasn't. And it was, not in this movie. And also, it's not just like, you don't see a portal. It was like, oh, I guess he got the last mother box. That sucks. No, it shows him going after the mother box. It shows Joe Morton get it. And at first he sacrifices himself. And I was like, oh, they just Duratanned him. You know, like he sacrifices himself for nothing because he still got the mother box. Steppenwolf still wins. Well, that, that was a stupid death. But you're supposed to think that because what he did was he marked it because he made it the hottest thing on earth. And they were like, oh, we can track that. He sacrificed himself to mark the mother box. Smart. So yeah, Superman hangs out in the farm with Lois, which the whole like Lois is the key thing. I got the feeling it was just like Lois is the key. All right, well, Batman brings Lois to the Superman fight and it's like, oh, that calms him down. Lois is the key. I got the feeling that's what they were going for and that that's not it. The whole Lois is the key thing, that is still out there. That is still yet to come. Another reason I hope they do sequels and continue this universe. Anyhow, Superman Supes shows up in his black suit, which is a much more boss entrance. Steppenwolf swings his ax, smacks Superman's shoulder. He's like, not impressed. <sighs> Freezes it with his breath and then shatters his ax. How is that not rad? Are you telling me Joss Whedon was like, I have a better way to do it. Weird. And in the end, the portal opening up, Darkseid's there, Steppenwolf gets his head sliced off. Like, that's way better than, oh, his axe is shattered. You smell that? Fear. Oh, and all the parademons start attacking it. Like, get, fuck, what? And also, anticlimactic feeling, anyhow. Also, yeah, Flash at the end of this movie, way more important. He saves the world. The world, like, they win, Darkseid wins. And when that happened, I was like, Holy shit. You know what I mean? Like, I, I thought it, the movie was just gonna end there. Like, I guess Darkseid won. Guess the next movie will happen. But no, when the world ends, the Flash is like, all right, I gotta run really fast. And he runs fast, he reverses time, and he undoes it. Like, <laughs> why was, I mean, of all the shit to cut out. I mean, no, I'll just have Steppenwolf go down because Parademons attack him because he feels fear. That's not cooler than the Flash reversing time. It's not, and Flash has more to do here. He has something important to do. Not saying saving a family that was clearly filmed as a pickup and just they put in the truck and Flash has to get the truck to safety. Good job, Flash. You got your newbie task of the day. No, instead of that, he saves the world. That's, 
that's what the Justice League is supposed to feel like. You're supposed to feel like, yep, all of them were necessary for the grand scale of saving the world, and they all do. So the movie leaves off with this epilogue. Bruce Wayne is hanging out in his pretty sweet modern ass house, and Martian Manhunter shows up, which I think this was about, I think all the epilogue stuff, I feel like Zack Snyder was like, I'm gonna film more. Which is funny because that dude who was Martian Manhunter, he was in Man of Steel, and he was like, oh, Earth's under attack. Let's see how the new guy does. Uh, we'll, we'll just see how he does. I don't want to blow my cover or anything. I mean, if Superman didn't pull it off in Zod 1, was Martian Manhunter going to be like, should have jumped in there? Oh, well, life, regrets, right? No need to look back. You just got to keep looking forward. I'll keep looking forward as we're all kneeling before Zod. <laughs> and the scene where Deathstroke meets Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor looks like this was the original filmed version and then the Joss Whedon cut just had an extra scene that was really close to Lex Luthor's face, probably because it's like, all right, Jesse Eisenberg, we got him back. So it was just like, all right, maybe we should start a league of our own. But this one's way cooler because it's Deathstroke, like it's personal between Batman. Point is Deathstroke wants to go after Batman because it's personal, lost his eye to him or something, which was probably filmed at the time. They were planning the movie, The Batman, where Deathstroke was going to be the bad guy. And it was going to be Ben Affleck. It's, it's all different now. So that post credit scene, I don't know how much relevance it has, but it's cool that it's there, you know? It's cool to see little glimpses of like, oh, what shoulda, woulda, coulda. And the Batman dreams are back. The Batman dreams aren't dreams, they're visions, they're reality. You get the feeling the world's gonna end and Darkseid's going to win, which is kind of awesome. And I wanna see that on the big screen. Deathstroke's there, British Mara's there. They're all there, they're there with Jared Leto's Joker. I don't know why he's there. I'm actually intrigued as to why he's there. I'm more intrigued as to why Joker is with Batman than Jared Leto's Joker being there. Because when I was watching this scene, I'll be honest with you, I was like, it still does feel like Jared Leto's Joker. I mean, his design's better. He is more calm though. So I'll give him that. He's not, it's not like he's trying so hard. But you know, when he laughs, he's still like, ah, ah, ah. And I still heard Jim Carrey in there a couple of times. Not that I have anything against Jim Carrey. Crushed it as Dr. Robotnik. Not even being facetious. I thought he was great in that movie. I think Jim Carrey's great in general. But the Joker sounds a little Jim Carrey-ish in this movie, which he also sounded a little Jim Carrey-ish in some scenes in Suicide Squad. So I kind of linked the two together. I'm like, okay, Jared Leto still sounds and acts like Jared Leto's Joker. But like I said, I'm less interested in, oh, Jared Leto's Joker than I'm like, why is Joker with Batman? Even Batman's like, I will fucking kill you. But I'm not gonna lie, that scene with Jared Leto's Joker, it's not like I was like, oh, completely, I want him as the Joker forever now. I suppose he has an uphill battle to get fans on his side and just wasn't enough to do that. So we'll see where it goes. But yeah, I, I hope they go on with this universe, you know? Even if Zack Snyder doesn't direct it, I want to see this story where Darkseid comes to Earth, cause he is coming and he's like, we will do the old ways. Oh my god, full-on invasion, it's happening. He's coming because he learned the anti-life equation, the ability to manipulate all life across the multiverse, not universe, no, multiverse, that's on Earth. Pretty high stakes there, I want to see that play out. The Justice League has come together, they, they've earned their right to be the new gods taking on this God Conqueror. There's also Easter eggs for the Atom. I guess the Atom will either be in the next Justice League movie or get his own movie. And these are interesting things like Shazam's part of the universe now. It could be great, man. It could be really good, but something, Lois Lane dies and it's like Injustice with Darkseid as part of it. Like I said, I feel like the marketing campaign for this movie overcooked the whole dark side thing, which I kind of get though. They have to show you, hey, this is a different movie. It feels different. It's not just Steppenwolf with a new design. Here's some dark side imagery. But you can tell dark side in this movie, it was a slow reveal. They start mentioning him, they talk about him a bit, and then you see dark side, and then dark side's like, I'm coming at the end. That shit would have melted minds if you saw that in the movie theater. And that's how it's supposed to be. You could tell. That said, I saw it this way. I really want to see dark side gun. I want to see all of it. I want to see Superman snap or not. It's like Superman's going to snap and Flash is going to have to run back and you know, undo it or something, or run back and give Bruce Wayne the message. The thing I really appreciated about Zack Snyder's Justice League is it had humor in it 
but it was spaced out and in context for the tone. It didn't make it flip into feeling like a comedy. It had humor, like after Flash trips Aquaman and Superman dodges Flash, Aquaman just points at him like, you. He's like, I am so sorry. A comedic moment once in a while in an otherwise darker toned movie, that's completely fine. But you don't want to overdo it and make it feel like, oh, we're watching a comedy now. Zack Snyder's Justice League didn't do that. Yeah, Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's good stuff. I'm not just happy Zack Snyder got to show his movie. I am happy for that, but I'm happy I got to see it. And I'm happy I got to see it. I'm happy I liked it. All right, so Zack Snyder's Justice League. Have you seen it? What did you think about it? And what's it? Spoilers in the comment section. Talk about all the spoiler stuff. Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. <laughs>